Hello dear Teamhood user! Today I will show you different Teamhood work item relations. Just because this is so important for every organization. It's, and it's not only about work item relations. It's also about people relations inside the team. And today, for example, I chose an agency which works on custom website development. And what they do, they do everything from scratch, from design to actual implementation and then deployment to the customer premises. And it means that if they need to complete a project, they require multiple people to work on that project or maybe even multiple teams. And it brings in some challenges of scheduling everything, organizing the order of execution, defining processes, and ensuring that people are aware who depend on what and what is the right order of things. And I will start by showing you three different projects. And in each project, I will use a different dependency or item relation type just to visualize which are the main use cases for them. And the first and the most fundamental item relation type is parent-child item relation. It is fundamental because whenever you do projects, initiatives, or you need to complete like a bigger piece of work, the best principle is first of all to break it down into smaller pieces. You cannot solve large problems. You need to know what are the smaller steps to get to the finish line. Golden rule. And you can do that in Teamhood right away from Kanban, you know, just break down a project into a checklist manner where you will say, okay, we need to complete this project success successfully. We need to do design. We need to implement design. We need to deploy the implementation and then we need to get acceptance from our customer. So both me and my team already know what requires to be done. Breaking down into smaller pieces is also superior because I can distribute those smaller pieces to different people as well as set separate deadlines and by combining those deadlines I can finally know what is the full timeline of my project and when I will be finished. So this is the fundamental part of it. And as I'm showing you everything from Kanban view, you're visualizing like two levels of hierarchy, parent and child work items. Now Kanban can do that up to three levels. But I also want to show you a difference with list view because list view is superior when you're working with higher hierarchy. And when you need deeper nesting in your work, let's say five hierarchy levels, not a problem. This is where list view or Gantt view are very capable of. And you can continue breaking down your child items in as we call grandchild items and grand grandchild items. And this will be um, infinite, there are no limitations un uh, except visual ones, but from our experience five levels of uh, nested hierarchy is quite a lot and you can accomplish very complicated projects with that. So in this example I just expanded sketch and design draft child item and it also has like three, three subtasks or, or child items as, as we might call, which well they just communicate or then document what is required to be done. You can continue assigning them to different people, setting schedules and various data points around those items because they are as capable as top level parent items. Having said that, um, I want to tell you also a bit uh, what are the pros and cons of working with child items. So child items are very good at documenting and keeping information as close to the main task as possible. Also, they work very well when you decide that your process is where project travels across the statuses together with child items, even if it changes the board. Of course, you know that you can uh, change locations of items and move them to other boards. So if you move this project to another board, it will travel together with those child items. So it's like a mapped out checklist. But in some cases, or in more um, developed and advanced cases, it's not enough. First of all, because you still want to keep your project in your general project management board 
and maybe you want to distribute work and move that work to a dedicated board used by specific type of team. Like in this case, I have sketch and design draft, which is of course for designer team. And I would like this task to travel to design team, but yet still be somehow related to this project. Because I need to know that this task, first of all, gets finished. Second of all, I need to know that this project cannot be finished without this task. Let's see how we can achieve that. First of all, you can do that by working around in item details. You can convert relation types between each other. And now I will be converting to dependencies. And dependency is like item which we must do before until we can finish the current one. And I will move this one to convert into waiting on dependency. So sketch and design draft now becomes a standalone task. It just appeared in here as a standalone task. I can finally move it to another board and I can even assign it to a different uh, responsible person who organizes designer work. Yet, if I'm using Kanban, I will see that there is a dependency uh, which we need to complete until we can call this project a success as well as child items. And I can keep doing that for all other tasks um, or child items until I distribute all of them across different boards and only my project remains in my project coordination board. Very powerful because it gives you flexibility to keep your project flowing across project management process, which might be just as simple as in here, to do next up in progress and done, while designer team will work on a very um, specific process Maybe they will even have swim lanes where they work on smaller items and they travel in the nested swim lanes. Powerful technique, lots of flexibility. You will need to define uh, one yourself to see if it gives you the right advantage. But dependencies are very important when you want to distribute work across different boards. They also have a limitation, by the way. You cannot distribute dependencies across different workspaces. Yet, the good news are that there is a way to do that. I will show it a bit later. Now, I, will want, to, I want to show you how dependencies are superior in another type of view, which we call Gantt. And in Gantt, if I take this um, project list, which I have, I can say, okay, I have another project, which is called Project Venus. And in Project Venus, I need to plan my work and see how much time the project will take I also want to ensure that tasks are executed in specific order. People know what is the sequence of work, how do they streamline and who depends on what. So first of all, I will schedule design, then I will schedule implementation, then I will schedule one week later deployment because this task takes a bit longer. Let's give it two days, this one three days and this one one day to deploy and then maybe a couple of days for acceptance. So this one this is my general um, work structure, which I just broke down. Then I will draw dependencies in GAN because it's that easy. And I will be listing out what is the order of things in my board and in my project. As well, if I will be using multiple boards, multiple boards and workspace views, these dependencies will be reflected in, in multi-board views as well. Very powerful. Last bit, if by any chance my designer team says that, oh, we cannot complete it in two days, we will need to take four days actually, I will reschedule this one and because of dependencies, everything else will be pushed ahead. Yeah, this is automatic scheduling for you and it affects your project final deadline, which can be communicated directly to the customer and it will be always on top of things. So these are item dependencies. Yet again, there are ways to manage them via different views. A lot can be done by working mainly in the item details screen because you can convert items from one dependency type to another. If I go back to my Kanban view and open my previous project, which I call Project Jupiter, um, you maybe saw that whenever I drag, I, I have an option to choose convert to blocking or convert to waiting on or convert to child item. So waiting on and blocking is actually the same dependency type. 
it's just the direction of the dependency. If I'm waiting for something, I imply that this work needs to be finished first. If I am blocking something, I imply that this current work needs to be finished first and then this item will be unblocked later. That's it. Simple as that. Now getting back to the last and the most advanced relation type. In here, I have Project Neptune, which has also the same child item breakdown. And you could come and say, hey Vida, so you just showed me how can I detach work from my project and move it to another board. But what if I want to keep it in the same board as a child item, but also in another location as a standalone item? No worries, Teamhood got you covered. And this is why we have synchronized copy relation type. I have already created it for the sake of efficiency and you can do it yourself by just clicking create sync copy and choosing where, where to place it. I have placed sketch and design draft synchronized copy into the design department's board or it could be even another workspace. This is really the major advantage of synchronized copies because they can be placed across different workspaces. Now what happens is synchronized copy synchronizes specific fields such as completion progress, schedule and final completion status. It means that if my project has the following schedule, I need to do, do, do sketches, implementation and deployment and the last date everything can be done is July 29th. So let's say if I make things later by one week for the implementation and then well I do deployment uh, one, one more week later um, and then we rely heavily on design being finished on July 29th I can feedback that information even from different workspace so this task has scheduled from July 25th to Ju July 29th if I go to this task, which is in the design board, I'm just quickly navigating. Don't mind that. You can just switch boards or quickly uh, click on those headers of items and you will be navigated to the actual task. And I'm, as a designer now, imagine I'm, I'm saying, no, I cannot complete it this week. I will be completing it on next week um, on the Friday. So the deadline has just, just changed. Now, if I close this one, I will also see that my sketch and design draft original child item changed the deadline as well. Now if, and it doesn't have the dependencies between other items, so now this remained the same, but if even it had dependencies between these items, it would also change this. It's a very powerful technique. If I change standalone item schedule in here, it affects my project. And if it goes outside project end date, it can even affect project end date. This is very powerful workflow. We can finally see the last bit of it. If my designer completes this item, it says, all right, we just get it done. Um, we just uh, finish the work. I can instantly see that the original child item also is completed and it's no longer visible in my checklist. That's the power of synchronized copy. And you can create as many synchronized copies as you want. And you can create chain of synchronized copies. This can give you a lot of flexibility, um, yet you need to understand what are the differences between different item relations. But by watching this video, I, I, I hope you have a clearer picture and you will find at least a couple of use cases which will optimize and make you and your team far more productive. For now, go ahead and try it out and watch other videos for becoming a champion. Thank you.